Hey fellow lab rats, this is Rebecca from the Lab Rat YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be discussing the staining of amyloid in the histopathology laboratory. All right, let's get started. Amyloid are abnormal fibrous protein deposits in both tissues and organs in certain pathological conditions. Uh, they do also contain around 1 to 2 percent carbohydrates, mostly composed of acid mucopolysaccharides. Now, amyloidosis is a disease where amyloid builds up in the patient's organs and tissues. These deposits eventually replace the important cellular elements of those organs, um, which causes a loss of function and eventual death of the patient. There are four different groups of amyloidoid amyloidosis. So primary amyloidosis is where the amyloid deposits just happen spontaneously without any known uh, disease cause. In the primary version of this, the amyloid deposits happen most often in uh, muscle, heart, skin, and tongue tissues. Secondary amyloidosis is associated with inflammatory conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis and tuberculosis. Amyloid is most often deposited within the kidneys, spleen, uh, adrenal glands, and the liver tissue in patients with this secondary amyloidosis. Uh, amyloid that is associated with myeloma is another type of amyloidosis. Um, the deposits are frequently found in the same tissues as primary, so those are muscle, skin, heart, and tongue. And the last group of amyloidosis is um, amyloid that is associated with tumors, especially those tumors of the amine precursor uptake and decarboxylation or the APUD system. In addition, amyloidosis can also be characterized by their protein groups. Uh, so AL includes amyloid that is immunoglobulin derived. Um, this includes primary amyloidosis and the amyloid that are associated with myeloma. AA amyloid is of no known origin and also includes secondary amyloidosis. AF amyloid is hereditary, and uh, lastly, APUD amyloid um, is amyloidosis that is associated with those types of tumors. Now, there are three different stains that are used for the demonstration of uh, amyloid within tissue sections. So these are alkaline Congo red method, crystal violet, and theoflavin T fluorescent method. And we're going to talk about all three of those now. So the first amyloid stain we're going to be discussing here in this lecture is the alkaline Congo red method. Um, after uh, the tissue is stained with this method, uh, visible green birefringence is the most specific stain for the detection of amyloid. So preferred fixatives for the stain are alcohol or carnoy solution, uh, Buin solution, Zanker solution, or 10% neutral buffered formalin are also acceptable as fixatives for this stain. Now it is important to note that if the tissue is stored for a prolonged period and 10% neutral buffered formalin, the stain will have a decreased intensity. Paraffin tissue sections should be cut uh, from 8 to 10 microns in thickness, and tissues that contain uh, amyloid must be used for the quality control for this stain. The reagents that are required for the alkaline Congo red method are as follows. 80% uh, alcohol saturated with sodium chloride stock, Alkaline salt solution, which can be prepared by combining 50 milliliters of 80% alcohol saturated stock with 0.5 milliliters of 1% sodium hydroxide. Stock Congo red staining solution and a working Congo red staining solution, which is prepared by combining 50 milliliters of the stock Congo red staining solution with a half a mil of 1% aqueous sodium hydroxide. The procedure for staining tissues with alkaline Congo red um, is as follows. So the tissue needs to be deparaffinized and brought to water. Um, then the next step is staining with Harris hematoxylin uh, with acetic acid, and this step is two and a half minutes long. After that two and a half minute um, stain with the Harris hematoxylin with acetic acid, um, the tissue section needs to be run um, uh, put under running tap water for several minutes. 
After that, uh, running tap water step, alkaline salt solution um, needs to be applied for 20 minutes. Then it needs to be stained for 20 minutes again with Congo red solution. Then after those two steps, that alkaline salt solution for 20 minutes and that Congo red solution for 20 minutes, um, it needs to be dehydrated rapidly with using three changes of absolute alcohol. Um, in each of those changes, um, the slide should have five to six dips in each. Um, after that, it needs to be cleared in two to three changes of xylene and then mounted with synthetic resin. When stained with the alkaline Congo red stain, amyloid will be a deep pink to red in color. Elastic tissue will be pale pink and nuclei if present will be blue in color. Now under polarized light, amyloid will have a characteristic apple green by refringence. So the tissue must be cut uh, between eight and uh, 10 microns in thickness for this, as I've already stated. So if the tissue is cut too thin, there will be faint red colors instead of that apple green by refringence. Um, and if too thick, the tissue will show a yellow by refringence in color. So thickness is very critical here. Now the photo on the left hand side of this slide shows a colon tissue section that is stained with the Congo red method. And recall amyloid will be a deep pink to red in color. The amyloid is visible here in this section. So this is the amyloid here, that uh, deep pink to red in color. Um, the photo on the right hand side shows the same tissue section, this time shown under a polarizing microscope. So remember, amyloid is going to show that apple green by refringence under the polarizing scope with the Congo red stain. It's very noticeable in this photo. So all of this is the amyloid here. Super noticeable uh, using that polarizing microscope. Now the next stain for the detection of amyloid deposits is the crystal violet stain. Crystal violet is not as specific as the Congo red method uh, for amyloid, but it still can be used as a rapid screening method for the detection of amyloid in tissues. So tissues should be fixed in 10% neutral buffered formalin or alcohol for this stain. And the paraffin tissue sections need to be cut uh, 10 to 12 microns in thickness. Any tissue that contains amyloid can be used for the quality control or QC for the crystal violet stain. The reagents needed for the crystal violet stain are a stock crystal violet solution, which is uh, prepared by combining 14 grams of crystal violet with 100 milliliters of 95% alcohol, a working crystal violet solution, which is prepared by combining two milliliters of crystal violet stock solution uh, 60 milliliters of distilled water and 0.2 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. I, also, you will need a modified apathy mounting uh, medium, which is created by combining 50 grams of acacia, 50 grams of cane sugar, 100 milliliters of distilled water, 10 grams of sodium chloride, and 0.1 grams of thymol. To perform the crystal violet stain, tissue must be de-paraffinized and hydrated to distilled water. Tissue sections then need to be stained with crystal violet solution for a five minute period. After this point, you want to check the QC slide um, and make sure that it is properly stained. Um, it, if it needs stained longer, um, you can do it at that point in time. You'll determine that based on the QC. Uh, then the uh, sections need to be rinsed in tap water and mounted with the apathy mounting medium. The edges of the cover slip then need to be sealed uh, using fingernail polish. When stained with crystal violet, amyloid will be a purplish violet color. Other tissue elements will be blue. Now the photo on the right hand side of this slide um, here is a kidney tissue section that is stained with crystal violet. This purpley violet color here so we're talking about all of this here, all of this, this whole thing here, right? Uh, it's it, in this section um, is the uh, amyloid deposits specifically in the walls of the blood ves vessels uh, within this tissue. So again, that purple violet color is going to be the amyloid. The last stain for amyloid is called the Theoflavin T fluorescent method. This is a decent method for the detection of amyloid, but it is not as specific as the Congo red method. A Theoflavin T is a fluorescent dye that attaches itself to amyloid in the tissue if present. 
Tissues need to be cut at 6 to 10 microns in thickness and fixed in 10% neutral buffered formalin for this staining method. For quality control for this stain, any tissue, of course, that contains amyloid can be used. Reagents for the uh, theoflavin T fluorescent stain are 1% theoflavin T solution, and this is prepared by combining 1 gram of theoflavin T with 100 milliliters of distilled water, 1% uh, acetic acid, which is prepared by combining 1 milliliter of glacial acetic acid with 100 milliliters of distilled water, and Mayer hematoxylin. To perform the theoflavin T fluorescent stain, tissue needs to be deparaffinized and hydrated to distilled water. The tissue then needs to be stained with he uh, Mayer hematoxylin for two minutes. And following this step, it needs to be washed with water for around three to five minutes. Next, the tissue needs to be stained with filtered theoflavin T for three minutes, then rinsed with distilled water. The tissue then needs to be differentiated with 1% acetic acid for a 20 minute period. After this 20 minute step, uh, it needs to be washed in running water for two minutes and then blotted dry. And after it is properly blotted dry, it needs to be mounted using a fluorescent mounting medium. Amyloid will be yellow to yellow green fluorescent under fluorescent uh, microscopy when stained with the theoflavin T fluorescent stain. The photo on the right hand side of the slide shows a kidney section that has been stained using this method. The amyloid deposits are clearly visible here as this yellow color. All right, so these are all those amyloid deposits uh, within that uh, kidney. All right, so this is it for our lecture on staining amyloid in the histopathology laboratory. If this video helped you out, please give it a like and please consider subscribing to my channel for more educational laboratory content. And as always, if you have any questions regarding this lecture, please leave them in the comments below. I'm always happy to answer uh, them. All right, until next time.